everybody and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel and uh, this is the Player in Focus show. Um, it's Thursday afternoon, stroke Thursday evening when I'm uh, when I'm doing this show, recording this show. The game was on Sunday now against Leicester. Uh, it's been a busy week reviewing or previewing uh, the, the World Cup games that are going on, the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, obviously I did a rating, a rating show. Um, a lot of people were complaining on social media that I gave... Uh, Nemanja Matic a six, they didn't think he was worth a six. A lot of people uh, claiming that he gave the ball away far too much. Uh, I claimed on a show on the United stand that he gave the ball away three times. I was, I was talking about three times when you must do better, when, when, not when you're under pressure and losing the ball, not when you're immediately under pressure. I would say the same about all players. Sometimes I criticise other players and people don't like me criticising some of the players who give the ball away when they're not under pressure, when it's not really tight or when they've got another simple, easy pass on and they choose the wrong option. I've said time and again, I like my players to take the right option. That's the first thing. If you take the right option, uh, that's a good step in the right direction. And then it's about, you know, have you got the skill or the technique, really, uh, to carry off the pass that you're trying to pass, uh, you know, the, the ball that you've chosen. Um, three questions that I think you should ask yourself when you look at any clip. Should he have done something different? So that's decision making. You know, should that player have done something different? And I'm forever putting clips up about this player's tried this difficult pass and there's a simple ball there to maybe to Wan Bissaka who's on the right or maybe a simple layoff and you try something fancy around the corner. When you've got something simple on, nine times out of ten, you're better off using that simple pass. Uh, so should he have done something different? That's the first question. Has he made the right decision? And I think that's probably the most vital question. And then next question, it's similar but slightly different. Uh, was was something different actually on or even available to him? You know, you know. So you know, you're asking that question of somebody who gives a ball away difficult. So you know, you're looking to see that there's something else on. It's all like criticising him. Criticising him when there is something else on. So then ask yourself the question, you know, was there actually something else on? Should he have done something different? He's given the ball away cheaply there, but should he have done something different anyway? Was he doing the wrong thing? And and thirdly, um, risk versus reward. Uh, th this is going to come into one of these clips that I'm going to show. Sometimes it's worth taking a little risk on. You, lots of people say they like risky football. I don't like risky football. Loads of people say such and such a player is the only one who takes risks. So I'm trying to stop the risks. I want us to play less risks, you know, take less risk, play less risky passes. But every now and again, it's fine. It's okay every now and again for every player. You don't want a particular player taking loads and loads of risks, and you don't want you, well, you don't want any of your players taking too many risks. But every now and again, it is just worth, you know, a flicked pass or a long ball. To start with, you got you need to mix your game up a little bit. You don't want to just be a, a steady Eddie who does everything. Uh, just dead simple, passing backwards, passing sideways. And a lot of people don't like that. I don't mind that. But every now and again, you have occasionally got to try and open up the op opposition or get somebody in behind. So, so long as you're not doing it all the time, there's no harm in trying something that is a little bit more risky on the odd occasion. Some people straight away will probably say, you're just saying that. Time and time again, I, said, I've, I've, I have said, I've got no agenda. I'm not Nemanja Matic's agent. I'm not his granddad. I've got no agenda whatsoever, except I want our players to play well. And I've gone through, the, I've watched the game live, uh, as you all know, or most of you know, uh, I watch it again before I do the player ratings, and I've watched it yet again on this occasion, I've watched it three times, and that is three times that I've watched it, and I've spoken about Matic, and I gave him a 6 out of 10, which is only decent, by the way, I'm not saying, I'm not saying he played fantastic, he wasn't Franz Beckenbauer, or Johan Cruyff, as I often say, but he had a perfectly decent game, that's all I'm saying. Gave him a 6 out of 10, which is decent. Quite a few got 5, Fred only got 2. Uh, but Matic got 6, he was perfectly decent. People were saying he gave the ball away far too much. So what I'm saying here is, I've gone through it a fourth time. This is the fourth time that I've watched the match. And I've literally gone through it watching Matic. 
and I've taken a clip of every single time that I can find that I give the ball away. And I can find seven. And I'm going to talk about the seven and I'm going to put the clips up on a Rick the Reds UK on Twitter of the seven occasions that Matic gives the ball away. I'm going to tell you what I think. Some people might say, you're trying to sway my opinion. You know, perhaps I am. I don't, I don't really know. I'm just trying to point out what I think is the correct way to play football. And if you're doing the correct thing most of the time, I don't mind you getting it wrong now and then. If you're going to do it, get it wrong loads and loads and do the old spectacular thing, I'm not wearing that. I need you to do it right more often than not. Um, and he's only given the ball away seven times. I realised a while ago that sarcasm doesn't go down well uh, on Twitter. It'll probably go down even worse on YouTube. Uh, I, I did take a clip, but I'm not going to put it up. He did give the ball to their defenders once on an occasion where they put the ball out for somebody to have treatment and we threw the ball back into Matic and Matic kicked it up the field to, to their defenders deliberately like they do, you know, it's gentlemanly conduct, so to, so to speak. So, um, not ungentlemanly conduct, gentlemanly conduct. So, he, he did give the ball to them on that occasion. If people are saying eight, nine and ten times he gave it away, I can find seven. Maybe the people who do the counting, maybe they counted that one. But, uh, as I say, I did take the clip, but I thought better of it. I'm not going to put that one up. So, I've got seven clips of Matic giving the ball away. And uh, clip number one, like I say, these will go up on Rick the Red UK on Twitter. This is really early in the game. It's the first first minute or two. It's the first minute, actually. Long ball played up the wing. Pogba challenges for it. You'll see that. It goes out for our throwing. The ball's thrown to Tellys. Now, we've all only got the same footage. So people, are, people can only see what I can see. So... What what happens? The ball gets. I think it gets thrown to Tallis, but the camera go the camera goes off the ball for a minute. I think it zooms in on Pogba or whoever. But the ball goes to Tallis, but the camera just comes in a split second at Tallis. It looks to me like Tallis passes it in field to Matty. It's just a short pass, four or five yards, and the pass needs to be better. I think it needs to be better. It's difficult because you get such a fleeting glance of it, but I think Tallis' pass should be better to Matty. And it's a yard or so in front of Matic, and he has to stride, he has to sorry, stretch, he has to really reach for it with his right foot. And Tielemans is on him, I think it's Tielemans. So he's right on him, right in front of him. He's got to play that ball first time. Because he's on the stretch, the chances of him controlling it and keeping hold of it, when Tielemans is literally a foot away, he has to play that ball. Look at it as I say, make your own mind up, I'm trying to explain to you. How I see it, that's all. He has to play that ball first time. It's with his right foot, he's on the stretch. He does, I spoke about this one the other day, he does see Martial ahead of him. He does aim it to Martial, but it's such a rush. He's, he's more intent on making sure Tielemans doesn't get the ball. He's more intent in rescuing the ball from the pass by Tellez, which needs to be closer to him rather than on the stretch for him. So, uh, so it goes... Uh, it goes towards Marshall, but it gets intercepted. I think, I think it's harsh to say the least to describe that. It is an incomplete pass. He definitely tries to pass it to Martial, but there are strong mitigating circumstances. Now I know not everybody is saying every pass is terrible. Every pass is terrible, but you need to get your percentages up, and you do need to get your percentages up. But when you look at pass percentages, as I said the other day, it's a bit unfair. Because these things mount up against your percentages and then somebody else might have, as I said, pass percentage might be better, but you might be passing poor balls. As I said about Freddie passed one behind Matic, he had to turn and go about four yards behind himself and bring it forward. Uh, another one that, that hit, I said I said Mason Greenwood the other day on the, script, on the, uh, on the show, uh, but it actually hits Wan-Bissaka around the chest, it bounces off one So two passes by Fred, for example, that go down as completed passes, you know, we're, we're poor passes, so we need to, there's no balance, the, the fact that somebody's got a better pass completion and somebody else doesn't really, doesn't really count for a lot, particularly if it's fairly close, it doesn't count for anything if it's fairly, fairly close, and this one, I don't know how they could do it, how they could change it, this first one of Matic's, in my opinion, should not really go down as an incomplete pass, it's just unlucky, he's trying to rescue a situation on the stretch, and uh, the ball goes to the defender instead of Martial. 
that's my opinion. I would say it no matter which player it was, having studied it closely, you make up your own mind. That's clip number one. Uh, clip number two, he does well to intercept the ball. It's high when he intercepts it. So when he intercepts it, it's bouncing. So it looks a bit ungainly as he runs onto it. Then he knocks it down with his shin. It's bouncing. It's difficult because it's, as, as I say, he's, he's had to jump to reach it with his foot to intercept it. But he does get it on the floor. He knows the importance of getting the ball on the floor. And then he manages to pass the ball forward to Martial on the floor. So Martial's got a couple of players on him. Martial gives it straight back to Matic. I don't think he's expecting it straight back, but it does come straight back to him. Now, this clip, I've actually paused it at the moment. Matic, he can't do anything about this touch, by the way. He can only get it when it comes to him. He can't get it any quicker. He needs to think about all these things. Like I say, you know, should he do something different? Has he got time to do something different? Was something different really on? These questions you need to think about. So the ball... The ball comes back to Matic from Marshall and he, he, you know, he gets his touch to it as quickly as he can. When he does get his touch to it, you'll see that there's a man on his back. And when I say on his back, touch tight to him. Top class footballers are absolutely fine, or should be. We've got one or two who aren't. If you've got a defender two or three yards away from you, you know, to the, to the naked eye, you might go, oh, that's a bit crowded, it's a bit tight. But a really top player can see that player there and can turn this way or can turn that way. When they literally touch tight to you, that's what you call pressure. So when Matic receives that, but he can feel it. He can probably feel the guy's hand on his back. He's touched tight to him. So he can't turn back. He can't stop. He takes a little touch, but because Martial was marked, his little touch is taking him towards three defenders. He's actually taking, but he can't not do that. There's nothing else he can do. He's got to take a touch to get it under control, and he's also got to protect it and keep it away from the man who's behind him. So as he's approaching these three, de three defenders, and they're approaching him, the gap's closing up rapidly. So he does a try. I think he does really well, and it's going to be an incomplete pass, or it might go down as uh, being caught in possession even. But he does a drag back because those three players are right on him, or two of them are right on him, and there's another one. It's a, it's a crowd scene. It's a crowd scene. So he's got to try and protect the ball, and he's got a man directly behind him. So he does a little drag back. He tries to pass it to Tellis to his left, and the man who's behind him, Manages to get a toe in. There's nothing Matic can do about it. He gets a toe in and it bounces to one of his teammates, you know, one of the players' teammates, not Matic's teammates. So it's frustrating while you're watching it. And I'm sure if you're not a fan of the man, you Matic, you'll be thinking, should have done better. What's he doing? I don't think there's anything else he can do. You know, like I say, we've all only got the same footage. Should he have done something different? I don't see it. I don't see what else he could have done. Was something different actually on or available to him? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think he, he, he's, he's doing his best to look after the ball. So that's the first two occasions that he's given the ball away. And I don't think he deserves any... Well, I think any criticism of the first two occasions uh, would be particularly harsh. When they're doing these pass, percentage, pass percentages... Uh, I don't know how they could get this out to the general public, but maybe they could say uh, pass percentages when you've got time to pass it, or when you've actually, you know, when you when you're not under pressure. I don't know how they could do it, but these two things that I've shown already will be well, they've got to be because I can't find other instances apart from these seven instances of him giving the ball away. But those two for me shouldn't be included. As simple as that for me. Uh, clip number three. This is the one where he tries to flick behind. I've already spoken about this one on a different show. Uh, Pogba rolls the ball forward to him. I've stopped it and I've looked at it. Um, first of all, a lot of people complain about him passing it backwards too, too often. Now he's facing his own goal. Tellez is this way and he tries that fancy flick behind him. The fancy flicks that I don't like, but I don't like players doing it all the time. You know, once in a game is, is, is more than enough. But it doesn't need doesn't need to be more than that. But I don't mind once in a game. And particularly, as I said the other day, when you're out wide and there's he's, he's trying to get it past one player to get it to tell. It's just one. In the middle, in the crowded centre of the pitch when you try flakes like that, invariably there's two or three defenders, maybe even a midfield player, and your chances of it coming off are minimal. On the flank there with one man to get it past, there's a chance it might work out. And as I said the other day, 
there's oceans of space in front of Teller, so you've got a little bit of room for error. There's no room for error in the middle of the pitch. If you can get it three, four, six or eight yards in front of Teller, Tellers will be onto it and it'd be a dangerous situation. That's risk and reward. It's worth the try there. What we could get from this, if it completes, could be exciting. It could be good news, but it's not It's not a flick for nothing. It's a, it's a chance to create to put somebody in a position to create a chance. And at the same time, it's extremely doable. I think it's all Brighton who's, who's tracking back and cuts it out. Uh, so it doesn't work. But could he do something else? I've paused it and looked at it. There isn't much else on. I, I really don't think there is. He could get hold of the ball. He could get hold of the ball and wait for things to develop. Maybe that's the only other thing that's on. But he is facing his own goal. So to all the people who complain about him passing it backwards, if there was something else on it, it'd be a backwards pass, by the way. So uh, maybe he could have took a touch. But again, I don't think... I think it's harsh to criticise him for that, but it's definitely... Definitely an incomplete pass that he tries. I would still say, though, that, like I say, back to the questions, should he have done something different? Not for me. I thought it was worth worth, worth the effort. And was something else on? I'm not sure about that either. I don't think so. Clip number four, he gets the ball in his own penalty area and he tries a long ball into their half. Again, with long balls. I don't particularly... It, it, two of these are long balls by Matic. I'm, I'm not having long ball after long ball, balls over the top. I'm not having that. Like I say, once or twice is fine. Just not half a dozen times in a game. So he tries this long ball, and I think it's a brilliant effort at a long ball. It's clip number four from his own box, and it pitches halfway into their half. It really is a fan. If Greenwood manages to get onto it, it's an absolute stunner of a pass. I don't think there's another player in our squad. Maybe Pogba, but other than Matic and Pogba, I don't think Bruno plays. This is a particularly long ball. Bruno tends to play him from around the halfway line and over the defenders, or just inside their half even, or maybe just inside ours. But this is from his own penalty. He's inside his own penalty area, and it pitches halfway into their half. I think only Matic and possibly Pogba could play that ball. It's an absolute stunner of a ball. But Johnny Evans is too smart, too quick for Greenwood, gets it, rolls it back to his keeper, uh, only just keeps it in by the dead ball line. It really is a good long ball. Now then, it's a long ball, he's in his own penalty area. Sometimes people clear the line, so players might have this in their mind. When you're in your own penalty area, it isn't such a bad idea sometimes just to put the ball in the opposition's half and we can all get up the pitch and try and pin them back. Let's get where we want to be. So... So when I talk about risk and reward, this is similar to that. It's not really risk and reward. This is balancing, you know, what's, this is what's the worst thing that can happen. You know, the worst thing that's going to happen here is they're going to get the ball. It might go out for a goal kick or what does happen. Johnny Evans gets it and gives it to the goalkeeper. It's gone over them. So, he, he, you know, Matic should knock it over him. He knows they've got a turn. He knows they've got to go back. And we're in our own box. Again, somebody might come in the comments and say, you wouldn't say that about Bruno. This isn't on the halfway line, you know, we're in, our, we, we, we're in our own box here, so we want to get out of that position. When you're near the halfway line, that's not the situation. So there's an extra there's an extra string to this bow, if you like. You know, we're clearing our lines and all getting up the field, as well as trying the long ball over the top. So again, I think, you know, maybe he could have helped this and he could have passed it. Should he have done something different? No. That's the first and important question to me every time. And I don't think he should. I think it's a ball worth trying. And It could maybe just be angled a little bit more to the right. Have a look at it yourself. So, oh, well, it doesn't come off anyway. Uh, Evans gets it. So, you know, it could be a little bit better. But for me, again, he's not done anything wrong there. It's definitely an incomplete pass. But I think it's a pass that was worth trying for the risk and reward. If it would have dropped right in front of Greenwood, we'd have been in a dangerous situation. Plus, as I say, it's getting your team up the pitch at the same time. So again, harsh, I think, to say, you know, that's an inc Certainly harsh to say that's poor, you shouldn't be doing that. That's definitely harsh. Uh, so it might be harsh as well to put it down as an incomplete pass. Clip number five, right, in the last five minutes of the half, uh, he seems to have a, a, a brainwave or something, and he does do two poor things. These are the two poorest things that he does in the game. They're both in the last five minutes of the half. Uh, he gets this one just outside his box. He runs forward with it. When he runs forward with it, Pogba's running forward to his left, and 
he deliberately holds it. When you hold the ball, when you're running with it, and their team come towards you, that means the player you pass it to could have more time and space. So when you hold it for them to come to you a bit, it's not for no reason. So they, as soon as he gets close to their players, he plays it off to his left, but it goes behind Pogba. They get the ball and they mount an attack. On another day, it could cost you a goal. I get that. But I don't think there's a midfield player in the world who doesn't give the ball away in his own half once in a game. They pass the ball a lot around in the, in the midfield. They do try and keep hold of it. So so he does, uh, he does give a poor one away there. And then... Uh, clip number six, again, he gets the ball just outside his penalty area. And he, this is a very poor one. I think he tries it into Fred's feet and it gets cut out far too easily. So that's the two poor ones that definitely go down as poor. Definitely giving the ball away cheaply and not particularly... Well, they're, they're not harsh. They're, uh, that's the only two for me that are definitely poor and deserve criticism. The only two. Clip number seven, and this is the last one. This is in the second half. This is, I mean, he gets subbed not long after this, and it's the only time he gives the ball away in the second half. And I think this one might be a little bit harsh. He gets the ball in that sort of left left half position in his own half, and he tries. This is the second long ball that he tries. A long ball to Martial. It's not a long ball for Martial to chase. It's angled at Martial. It's aimed at him. I think he's aiming it for Marshall. Marshall's great with his back to goal. He wants Martial to try and bring it down. Mason Greenwood's in front as Martial's looking at the ball coming. Mason Greenwood's there. I'm not sure whether Matic sees that, but he might do. Martial is, is going to try, I think, to edit down. If it's low enough, he'll, he'll chest it down to give it to Greenwood, who's directly there facing him. But it's a little bit too high. And I think it's Soyonchu who's just behind Martial. I think he gets his head to it. Um, so you ask yourself the questions, should he have done something else? So I've looked at this. This is probably this could easily be, and I wouldn't argue against it, if somebody wanted to say this is the third time that he's given it away poorly out of the seven times that I've, that I've found him giving it away. Um, but I will still say that are mitigating circumstances. Should he have done something different? That is always an important question. And I've paused it. I haven't paused it for you. To, you know, you need to pause it yourself. Really, I, I paused it to look at it. I don't think I've actually paused this clip. But you can see when Matic gets the ball, you can see Luke Shaw running down the left. But there's a Leicester player too close to Shaw. He might be four or five yards in field, but the gap for Matic to get, get it through to Shaw, into Shaw's path, is a bit too small, I think. I think it's too much of a risky pass to try and get it to shore with that defender in such close proximity. He's also got Pogba and Fred in front of him. Have a look at them. And they're too tight. It's, it's too crowded. There's a player both sides of Pogba, you know, four or five yards away, but it's a bit of a tight, tight squeeze to give it to Pogba. It's a bit tight to give it to Fred. And he's also getting closed down from this side. So it might be a little bit risky, and people wouldn't like it anyway. <laughs> you know, here's me saying, you know, it's a risky ball and it's a poor ball, and yet 90% of the people who talk about him are fed up with him passing it backwards. At least it's a forward pass. But, uh, you know, he's good at this, Matic. He's strong on the ball. He's getting approached from this side by a Leicester player. He could perhaps stick his arm out and keep the ball on the outside of his left foot and go back to Maguire. He could perhaps try that. But I don't believe that there's a different pass on that's an easy pass. And I don't think it's a, the wrong decision necessarily to try the clipped pass to Martial. But um, it's a little bit too high. Uh, so on two gets it. And uh, for me, if you want, that's the third time he's given it away pretty poorly. But even that one, I think, is slightly harsh. We've got lots of other players who give the ball away more often. And in, and in situations... Unlike most of these situations where, where A, it's definitely worthwhile trying that, or B, under extreme pressure and doesn't, you know, does, does the best job you can of actually getting the ball uh, to one of his teammates. So, having watched the game four times uh, now, and having marked Nemanja Matic six out of ten, which is decent, decent to above average, five is average, six is decent to above average. Um, I have got no qualms whatsoever in reiterating that the 6 out of 10 that I give him is definitely fair. He doesn't deserve to be marked any less than a 6 on that performance. Not in my opinion anyway. Um, 
this this uh, show will is being recorded thurs late Thursday afternoon, early evening. Um, it will be up Thursday night at some stage, and uh, probably late tonight I'll get the clips up. If not late tonight, certainly by by Friday morning, uh, early Friday morning, the clips will be up on Twitter on Rick the Red UK. If you've enjoyed that show, oh by the way, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd love the comments to come in and and say you know. If you think look, I'm being too fair, or if you think I'm being too, you know, I don't think anybody will think I'm being too harsh. But if you think I'm being over fair, please let me know. I, I don't think I am. I really don't. Uh, if you've enjoyed that show, please subscribe. Please tell all your friends. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody. Keep stoned.